The Arizona Department of Corrections is working on a new phone contract to drop calling rates for prisoners. Cronkite News reporter Lauren Klenda looked into what this means for inmates' families. Arizona has the fifth highest prison phone rate in the country. The financial burden from these fees are making some families feel like they're the ones locked up. He is a sweet guy, a really great guy, but he's made some mistakes. Shayna Pallas is married to a man who is currently facing a seven and a half year sentence in prison for second degree burglary, but she is also facing severe financial troubles because of it. It's a lot of money. I mean, I live with my mom. On top of supporting herself and her two year old daughter, Pallas has been paying high telephone fees, trying to keep her daughter connected to her father however she can. <gasps> Where'd Daddy go? Look, look. Daddy, you're here. And that's my priority is having them maintain as much of a relationship as they can because they look the same, act the same, they were like best buds. But at $6 a call, keeping that connection isn't easy. You know, some people might not see $6 a day as a lot, but when you have an infant, you know, $6 a day is half of, you know, a pack of diapers. And that doesn't include the fees incurred from outside services. The Arizona Department of Corrections, also known as the ADC, charges the base fee of $6, but it is currently under contract with Securus Technologies, their phone service provider, who charges an additional fee of almost $8 every time a user credits money to the inmate's phone account. The people who can least afford these extra fees after they've already lost perhaps the breadwinner in their family or incurred some legal costs that were unexpected anticipated. These are the people who are paying these costs. The current contract with Securus gave the ADC a little more than 50% in commission. And by state law, all of the revenue from phone fees is to be used on inmate programming. But a new contract underway with CenturyLink will increase the ADC's commission to 93%. The ADC wouldn't give an on-camera interview. In a statement, they say the funds will, quote, help ensure a healthier fund to pay for essential and legally required programming services that the department provides for inmates. Um, if they go toward programs, I'm not seeing it. I know that he writes me all the time telling me that they hardly have any books in their library. He's not in any programming. Even though the ADC said all of the money in the fund is to go towards programming, according to the department's budget, the numbers don't add up. In 2014, there was a balance of $10.5 million in the special services fund. After all of their spending on programming, the budget shows nearly an $8.9 million balance. There really needs to be a state audit of how that fund is used and some limitations so that there are only uh, expenditures from that fund used for direct inmate programming. Pallas said she would feel better if she knew revenue was going to be completely used on programming. But right now, she says the whole process has been anything but easy. I think that it's time, if nothing else, to stop treating the families like they're the inmates. The new contract with CenturyLink is supposed to begin on July 1st. So far, the ADC is projecting a spending increase on inmate programming across the board. The most notable difference will be a nearly $2.6 million increase to fund work-based education for inmates. But even with a high commission rate of 93%, the only plan to put forward an extra $3.2 million, leaving almost $6 million untouched. In the Broadcast Center, Lauren Klenda, Cronkite News.